look like fabric or animal skin or whatever it's uh, designed to be. Three hundred different kinds, and that means everything from very, very almost gossamer thin pieces, papers that look like lace, and then we do heavily, heavily textured ones, lots of fiber, leaves, all kinds of plant material in them, and also extremely heavy. This is an architectural type paper. This you could almost build something freestanding out of. It's just that rigid. We have papers that have been tie-dyed, and we have beater dyed, which means the pigment has been added to show you how to work with this. It's fabulous stuff. It's actually from the mulberry tree. Uh, it's from the bark of the banana tree, and then it's woven into this textile. We move on to our pulp netting, which is banana wrap, paper pulp, blown into it. Wonderful effects. It's a little bit messy, but we're really made with um, fish netting and then the handmade paper pulp. Uh, anything like that. You can get these commercially. Uh, we carry them. Most of the craft stores carry them. You can also go out and find your own stuff. In the blue. Just wring it out a little bit. Yeah, you want to wring it out a little bit. But if you get extra, it doesn't matter. And just kind of, you know, start... Sticking it on, yeah. And we, same thing. Just we put this on, and again, work it in. You always want to tear this. You don't want to cut paper. Okay. You're going to get those flat edges, unless that's the effect you're going to. A much, much less reliable paper. And as you start to work it, you'll notice oh, that wow. it starts to goo on us. It starts, and literally in about two minutes, this will start to turn into oatmeal in my fingers. Uh -huh. Okay. And if it does that, and you can see it's starting to do it now, you still can work it. Oh, it's just, you see what it's doing? Yeah. At this point, you can read it this way. You can see it on. It's a really interesting effect. Uh, the first thing I'm going to start putting it up here and letting it dribble. Okay? And you just keep doing that and working it and to maintain this. We started off, this is a uh, paper mache form. Called cake box. Okay. You can open it up so it makes it kind of an ink. That's a natural craft color on the back. We'll add to that texture. And this will dry in this shape. Okay. 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 Is there a little bumblebee? Oh. Okay. How do you decide which colors to pick? You know, I open it up to the drawer where all these guys are kept and grab out almost everything. And I just keep working it. And I, you know, where the patterns are that we want. And there's don't worry about what your edges and stuff are like. Okay. As long as they're torn. Yeah, and you can see the texture. You can see that they were dried on a, on a type of screen because you can actually see the patterning in them. They're about tissue thin. Worked, worked, and worked with that on the first time. But afterwards, we went, they're fabulous. It gives it a crackly look. Oh, almost yeah. a crackly look. Just, just in the ease. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would suggest that you always start with shorter pieces just because it's easier to work with and you won't get so frustrated with it. Okay. Okay. And you just keep working this. This is very stiff stuff, so you need to work with it wet. And then open it up. And depending on the effect you want, generally what I will do is take scissors because these hard edges, that's what you want to do with it. You want to make it kind of spider webby. Uh -huh. And then again, you can pull apart various pieces down relatively flat. What you could also do, though, with I get one more to make sure that it's really that pulp lace. This is pulp lace. Yeah, That's wonderful. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? It's just that. Well, mm -hmm. when you're all done, do you coat these with anything? Um, if you were, if it was going to get very much harder to with this. Uh, it also. Okay, so we're going to work with these. These are um, old petrol cans. Okay. And that's the piece of The only difference with this um, in its clearness is that it won't have that matte finish that a lot of your other um, substratas do. Well, and I noticed with the tissue paper, you clump it, but that's kind of a thing you can do that and add um, your paint. Oh, it goes great with the style of the... Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a Jakarta. And be almost like it's part of it. It's almost like the edges get, almost like you said, hard, so it, it looks like ceramic. It looks like ceramic, and yeah. we do that all the way around. It's a really, really interesting look for sure. And then we finished and trimmed it off. With oh, I love the trim. This, and it, they'd even repeat the paper. Yeah, these could actually be used, and certainly hand washed and lots of look. So it goes, uh, the fabric is just, I mean, the, the um, paper just looks fabulous. Yeah, that's what you're going to be doing. 
Uh, we want to show you just a sort of a teaser to get your imagination going, a couple pieces of furniture that we've done recently and that we will be doing.